the military part of the city with the headquarters for the officers with the barracks with the canteen or with the bunker with the wind farm system inside um, there was a civilian part still with 2,000 people 1.5 of them were soldiers and officers and 500 uh, families children wives and other things and here is located the Dugarator uh, to explain to you how the, how the Dugarator is to work I had to draw a picture there was a sand current between the Dugarator. So the picture was explaining how it used to work, like the theories and other stuff, right? So uh, general information about the Dugarator, uh, there was a few of them. Uh, first one, the big one, the high is 150. Length 500. Uh, little one, let's say uh, 90 and 250. So total length of the ball Dugarator is 750 meters of the metal construction. The total mass is 18,000 tons. The price of the Dugarator, uh, by the way, sorry, in the newspapers perhaps, the price of the Dugarator was 7 billion of rubles. Uh, in terms of cold water, ruble will equal almost 1 to 1 to the dollar. So 7 billion of dollars. And the price of the power plant, for example, including the building cost for 56 reactors, was 3.5. Mm -hmm. How about that? But that exchange rate was the government exchange rate, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> it was like a hundred times more on the black market, right? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and I yeah. told you about the currency exchange, remember? Oh yeah. oh yeah, I remember those. So, let me ask you this. So, did people around here, did, they didn't know what this was? I mean, they must have seen it. <laughs> they saw it, yeah. It was a and they just thought it was a, like a TV antenna or something? <laughs> yes, exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> People in the prefect even, they had a 64 building, and it's even, uh, it, it's really a little bit hard to hide it. I really right? want to watch friends. <laughs> All around. Uh, the people started and saw the Dugarator at the horizon, from the balcony, from the rooftop, and I was like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. right? And they started to do the most like uncomfortable questions to the government, like, what the hell are we looking at? Uh, the answer from the government was pretty simple. As you said, TV yep. antenna. Yeah. And yeah, that was the answer for everything. I remember that. And the people believe that they are having choice, you know, because the yeah, government yeah. telling us, and we have to believe that this is the government, mm -hmm. and we are the nation. So we have to believe. And, and do you know, uh, was this just purely like a, you know, Soviet uh, military just a detection of, uh, like they say, or was it also jamming of, uh, no, like the I, Western I, I, radio I, I, and I all that? Just right now, we need to do the radar. Okay. I have to draw the picture. Okay. Can you find this or not? Normally. Normally not, of course. Not normally, yes, of course. <laughs> and yeah, before you ask me, uh, I want to answer that one, the one guy who fell from the top. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. General, I have to know the most important information about the Duga Raider, the system of Duga Raider. It was planned at the over the horizon. Early warning system. What does it mean, over the horizon? Uh, that's not all the system. There is also the antenna. Two kilometers far away from here in that direction, right forward. Um, oh, the amateur is 350 meters. Antenna, right? Circle one, 350. Here is a decorator, for example. Here we have our planet Earth. And around the Earth we have what? Ionosphere. Enemies. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have ionosphere. Exactly right. So, 
uh, once per seven minutes and then I launch at the powerful signal strong enough to bounce from ionosphere back to the Earth and back for 15,000 kilometers in direction of the United States. That time, once per seven minutes, that time Duga launched the frequencies of special type and depth to analyze the signal and the main objective was to detect the enemy's missiles, the rockets, the hot trails. Uh, the Soviet Union soldiers in that very city studied the different type of the rockets from the United States. The speed, the weight, uh, the length, how it could fly, and etc, etc, etc. Since they get the first point, and then I immediately launch another one signal, just to get the second point. With that information, they already had realized what kind of rocket you're flying, the speed, the type of rocket, the corner, and the, probably the target. Right? Uh, I think they get a first point. The soldiers of the Soviet Union got 25 minutes before it strikes someplace to decide what to do. Usually it was like, let's just destroy in the air by our rocket. Right? As usual. Uh, the system was pretty cool. Uh, well, if it could be like uh, the target of the rocket, it could be like some common house or not important strategical building. Well, I'm sorry, you know. We, we don't want to show the, uh, the world the system of the, over the horizon, all the warning, you know. Let it be. But if it could be like... Um, Let him grab. For example, yeah. If it could be like uh, the Ducurator itself, or one of the power plants, for example, or some sort of like strategical object, yeah, we have to strike the rocket by our own. Let it be the war. Mm -hmm. uh, the price, remember, 7 billion. So double time more than the power plant. Uh, the system of the rays, the frequency, the signals, and the other stuff is really complicated and it's really incredible. But my favorite part of that story, the Duga Raider never worked. Mm. <laughs> and is that because there was never any rockets going? <laughs> no. Well, first of all, yeah, there was no rockets. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they also tried to test it uh, on the rockets of the Soviet Union. Yeah. They launched the rocket and testing the Duga Raider. How it works actually, how it used to work. But, <laughs> no. Uh, hey, you know, the Soviet mantle, as fast as possible, as cheap as possible, we have to be the first in the world. Because, uh, seriously, the over the horizon system was that one, was literally first in the world, first of that type. And the scientists who worked with the frequencies launched by the Duga Raider, they mm, had a lot of mistakes in calculation the depth and the type of signal and the other stuff and the signal from the Duga Raider start to interrupt each other with the TV signal, radio signal, the ships, the plane, the everything with the frequencies and the people start to hear that noise <laughs> listen to the radio, you start to hear that noise nice one? Nice. first of all, is that every the seven minutes or that's all the time? The frequencies all the time. Oh, okay. Um, first of all, the signal was spotted in the United States, of course. Uh, and the system of the Duga Raider was discovered after the first 30 seconds <laughs> of launching, of testing. A big secret, you know. The trees as well. Um, because of that noise in the uh, United States, they started to call the Duga Raider as a Russian woodpecker. Yeah. Well, the people of Soviet Union, of course, they heard that noise, strange noise, right? Uh, the system was built seven years, in 1974. The people started to hear that noise and they uh, realized, they understood that uh, they're going to be zombified, right? As usual, of course, no doubt. They're going to be the slaves. Like, they're not. Mm. And did the government say, that's, no, that's not us, that's the Americans sending yes, the signal? Yes, exactly Correct, right. right. They're enemies. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, there is actually a theory that connected the Duga Raider uh, with the explosion at the power plant. Mm -hmm. okay, we uh, well, it's just a theory, remember, by personal, me, I don't believe in that, because it's incredible stuff. Uh, and all the, you know, the stories of that type, mistaken, not mistaken, uh, 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 any other, there must be a man who had to be blamed, right? <laughs> Always. Yes. In that story, it was a general of connection in Soviet army. Shenzhen. That's it. 
uh, he decided to build a project of Duga radar system over the horizon. Um, that was not the only one Duga radar. You know, not only this one. Was three of them. Quick math. Twenty-one billion, right? <coughs> uh, just to cover the Soviet Union, all sorts of protection all around the Soviet Union. We protected from all the world. So he made a little bit of papers, uh, some work, some testing, uh, some calculations. Well, you know, guys from the government who have the money, I have the project and I need the money. And the government was like, how much? And he was like, 21 billion. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> yes. A little bit strange, because, you know, uh, in Soviet Union, uh, there was a lot of different uh, strange laws, as I said, that right? If, if you try to private the uh, hundreds of rubles from government money, you could be shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the guy goes far. He tried to ask for 21 billion. He realized the responsibility. And he started to build a project of Duga radar system. Three of them. Second in the Ukrainian city Nikolaev, and the third one in the city. <laughs> Yes. Uh, just uh, say viewers for everyone, just like, you know. Uh, and so. The other ones are still there? No? Yeah. 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 Well, I'll tell why. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Actually, yeah. The network so the project was finished in 84. In 77 to 84. Then, two years of testing, they did nothing but they not. And then, as I know, the Gorbachev himself was like, you know? What about the Duga actually? Uh, your system, uh, your brilliant uh, system, uh, what is that? Uh, what the money? Uh, it was like, I'm testing. It's pretty enough time for testing, you know? We need to have the results of the money spending, that amount of money. Uh, let it be the first official test with the official report for the first secretary, for the main officials, for the main people who give you money, where you spend the money, 21 billion. <laughs> It's not a joke. We could build 10 power plants with that money. Uh, let it be the first official test and let it be in the first day of May, 1986. <laughs> <laughs> An explosion happened? Everything like this yeah. So he realized uh, after the first seconds of testing, after the first second of ta 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 ta, -ta he could be like uh, ta -ta -ta the same at the same place where he stand. And he started to think. He started to think. He started to gather information actually how to survive. Because the first day of May will be the day of his death. <laughs> and he discovered some interesting report about explosion at the power plant in Tank Petersburg in 77. Reactors of the same type are being exploded. Mm -hmm. But without damaging the building of the power plant, so without spreading the radiation, right? It was pretty easy to hide in that time. Well, accident, yeah, yeah, some people die, but, you know, you know, happens. Somebody made a mistake. A little bit, yeah. But reactor still cannot explode, remember. Yeah. It's impossible. It's a brilliant system. All right, so he got his report. In the beginning of April, 86, he became the Ministry of Connection. Career. Feel that, um, and he realized that it was actually his chance. And you remember from the series, uh, what does it mean for the Soviet Union? I'm in charge, right? Second episode, the fat guy in the chair. You are just nuclear physicist, but I'm the minister of. I'm in charge. I will tell you what you're doing, right? Uh, till 2015, the information. Uh, 2015 is a year of the death of that minister. Four years ago, he died. Mm -hmm. Information were kept in secret. Information about one little phone call from Kremlin to the power plant for a few minutes in one hour in 15 minutes at night. Really sh short phone call, um, like you know, whatever it takes. Do not stop the test. We need the results till morning. Telling you the minister of connection. And there were three failed tests before, as reactor number four. And it wasn't in a good quality. 
in the forest that uh, perhaps that, that minister didn't realize that it could be like the largest nuclear disaster in the world, but it was his chance. If something happens in power plant near the Pripyat city, it could be uh, a little bit but delay or to fix the Dugarator or to leave the Soviet Union, whatever it takes. So he made that phone call, whatever it takes, do not stop the test, and then by the cost of one life, uh, hundreds of million will die soon or later. Just a theory. I don't believe. That was a phone call from Kremlin to the power planet, 1 and 15. Who? Who need to do that phone call? Who else? At night time, before the test. There was a lot of opinions of the scientists. You cannot do that test. It's you, you, you know, it's, it's just like xenon pits. It's too dangerous. It's uh, steam inside the reactor. It's, it's active core is damaged. We cannot do the test in that reactor, right? We have to do it like in the other one or or later, or not not today, not this night. But they did it. By the order. Who need to give the order? That's for you to decide. <coughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, the other two decorators were destroyed because of, uh, we're now actually defacing the largest monument in the uh, history of the money waste, right? <laughs> uh, so the other two were destroyed. That one, as I said, 18,000 tons, uh, located in 9 kilometers far away from the power plant. Imagine that stuff falling down. <laughs> it could be not little, uh, but a real earthquake. And as you remember, right? It can damage the reactors. We get a bit of feedback of them. And before it, a little, a little piece of the that one. We can get it in a, in a low ground, I think. The thing is, I put a piece of electricity, no? And was was that the reason why there was a power plant so close? They needed like a lot of energy? No, there were no? a lot of cables. There were okay. a lot of cables to connect the power plant with the Dugarator. It wasn't okay. a problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it goes a whole length of the radar. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them, 750. <laughs> they built this building to go the whole length of the structure? Yeah. What a waste. Just, just for the cables. Uh, Holy smokes. You believe they did that? Yeah. Oh.